Right now we know how to create a list and we know how to work with individual items in the list to either print them out or assign them new values. If we want to work with an entire list, we need to use a for loop. If we want to print something from a list, we need to use a for loop. If we have a list of monsters we need to draw on the screen, we need to use a for loop. There are two types of for loops that are often used in working with lists. The first type of for loop I've got up on the screen right now. In this case, I've got the list right here. It's simply a list of five different elements, and I've got my for loop. This type of loop is called a for each loop. It is an easier loop to work with when going through a list, but it isn't quite as powerful as the second type of list that I'll show you. In this case, the list goes right here. It is the second item, and you can see that's the same list that I've got here. So this is telling me I want to iterate through this list. The list takes each item and puts it into this new variable. It is okay that you haven't seen it yet before. This is where it's defined and created. The first time through the loop, this will equal 101. Item will be 101. It'll print 101. Next time through the loop, it'll be 20, so it'll print 20, and then 10, and then 50, and then 60. Item will be a copy of the item that's in the list. It won't be the actual item. So if you modify this, if you assign item to a new value, this list doesn't change. If you work with a for each loop, it will not modify the list. You may have noticed that this window does not look like the normal Python window that we've used in the past. In this case, I'm using what's called the wing IDE, and IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. This IDE has a lot more features than Python's built-in idle editor, and I'm going to use this to step through the code to show how it operates. You can download wing IDE, search for it online, and see if it's a type of editor that you wish to use instead of the Python editor. So now we're stepping through the code and this red line right here is the code that the computer is currently running. As I step over this line of code, you'll see down here this changes. And it is telling me that I've got my list and it's pointed to at this strange looking number right here. This is the address. It's a lot like a house address. And that is where the data is for this list. We've mentioned before that lists variables such as my list up here, they don't actually contain the list. What they do is they contain an address to the list. This will become very important later on. And this is the length. There are a total of five elements in the list. I can expand this out and I can see each individual item in the list, 101, 120, and so forth that we just assigned. Now I can continue stepping through the code. Right now I'm about to print. I can see that the loop has set item to 101. I step again. I've printed out the 101. As I keep stepping through this loop, you can see how the display is showing the different numbers that are printing out. If I go back here to watch, I can see what the variables have in them. Right now I've got 10. And this makes it pretty obvious that each time through the loop, First time through, item is going to be 101. Next time through, item is going to be 20. Next time through, item is going to be 10. Then 50. And finally, 60. I'm not limited to only working with numbers. I can also work with strings or a lot of other types of objects, which we'll get into later on in the book. This allows me to print first link, then Princess Zelda, and finally our arch nemesis gets printed out. When I run the program it prints out Link, Princess Zelda, and Ganon. We have our for each loop. It can print out all different types of data, not just numbers. We can use it to store each individual object that happens to be in our game and print that out as well. Something that might confuse people is if we have lists inside of lists. For example, if we have this,
what's going to print out? In this case, what we're going to have print out will be 2, 3, 4, 3, and 6, 7. They'll be printed out as groups. It will not print out 2, 3, 4, 3, 6, 7. The first item in this list is actually itself a list. This is 0, this is item 1, and this is item 2. So if I print this out, what I'm going to get down here will be the 2, 3, 4, 3, and 6, 7. The length of this list, if I were to print out the length, is 3. It's not a total of 6 because each one of these lists is considered one single item. The other way of iterating through a list is to use an index variable. This way is slightly more complex than using the for each method of going through a list, but I'm working with the original list. This allows me to modify the original list if I want to. This is how it works. I've got my original list right here, just like what I had before. Nothing new there. My list right here, I'm going to find the length of. So len my list is a function that will take the list and return the length and I'm going to get a total of 5 because there are 5 elements. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 even though the computer indexes these by 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The computer will take this length my list and replace it with a 5. What I will have here is a 4i in range 5. We did this way back when we started talking about loops i is going to equal 0 and then 1 and 2, 3, and finally 4. But, of course, not 5. I can use the index, in this case i, and the different values that it takes, put that in for the index of my list. The first time I operate this, it's going to print my list 0. Next time through the loop, we'll work with my list 1, and then my list 2, finally my list 3, and my list 4. It will iterate and run this print statement five different times, each time with a different index variable, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, based upon this and the range that we have. When I run this, we can see how it works. First off, I create my list. Here it is expanded out. I've got all the elements just like I had before. Now, when I run this and step over the for loop, the variable i right here, we can see the value of down here in this watch window. First time through, the value is 0. And what I'm going to get will be my list bracket 0, which is 101. So I expect that to print out. And indeed the 101 prints out. Next time through the loop, i is 1. I can see that down here. It's going to print out my list index of 1 and it'll print out a 20. As I keep looping through this, we can see the value of i, obscurely shown over here, keeps going up and I keep printing out each individual item out of that list until the for loop is done and my program has printed out each item in the list. It is a more complicated for loop, that's why we've got the for each version of the for loop and if you're not modifying the original list then the for each is probably the type of loop to use. But if you're going to modify the list, then you need to use this type of for loop. Granted, in this particular example that I've got right here, we didn't need to use this type of for loop. But later on in the next section, I'll show you how to use this type of for loop in order to modify the list.